I don't know. It's, it's been there for a couple years now. Don't worry about it. It's a, it's a Kappa from Twitch. Besides what? Hey, welcome back. Good to see you guys. Brand new video today. Brand new. I'm just going to jump right on into this tutorial. But first, I want to say thank you guys for watching all these tutorials. I appreciate it, dude. Today, we're going to be getting into something that's kind of unique. This has been something that I've done in my channel for uh, a while now. It's something to make your streams and your, your content look a little bit more smooth and, and professional. So I'm here to show you guys how to make your camera and your sources and other things move inside of OBS. But I'm talking an easy, easy way to do it because the way I used to do it, a little bit more complicated than this. So get excited, stick around. This tutorial, nice and quick. Also, I turn off the moving cam. People, I get these people every now and then and just complain about the moving camera. You let me know what you feel like, okay? Put it down below. D good, bad, stick, stay stationary. You let me know. Let's get into it. So we're here on my main desktop here. And today what we're going to be showing you guys is how to do something very similar to this. And it's just moving your camera around something very simple. But you can also utilize it to uh, maybe bring out another uh, a new camera or something like that. Maybe you have another source on standby somewhere that you want to bring in. So sometimes I'll go into like a cinematic mode. So I'll hit a button and boom. Now we are in cinematic mode. And then uh, I just come back and and nobody's the wiser. So uh, we're gonna be teaching you guys that today. Very simple, very easy, and you can kind of utilize it in your own unique ways. Maybe have something show up on screen, whatever you want, man. You can also choose to transition between scene and scene without actually doing a stinger. This might be a, a useful situation for you guys to like do something new that no one else is really doing. Okay, so I went ahead and I created a couple scenes here inside of OBS. I made my uh, my main scene. Now, each of my sources that I put into this, uh, look, you can just pretend that it's a camera. This could be your gameplay. This could be a browser source. This could be an image maybe you have. This could also be your gameplay, whatever you think you might want. So I'm just substituting here just as colors, just so you can kind of get a better idea of what's happening with each individual item. So I went ahead and I made some gameplay here that is red i put in a, a camera which is the pink and then i made over here i made a nice little uh, on-screen element which is just maybe a browser source maybe that's my chat underneath or like an alert or something that happens underneath my webcam then i made a standby scene and you can see here i got the camera on the left i got the gameplay on the right and then i got that same browser source right here just chilling and then i have a full cam scene which is literally just full cam uh again just picture this as my full cam scene, you know what I'm saying? So to mimic something that we did a second ago, I'm gonna go ahead and right click and go to filters on this scene. I go into filters, and you can see we have our scene kind of up in here. Let me go ahead and full screen this on over. And you can see we have this scene right here. I'm gonna right click and I'm going to add a move source and I'm gonna go ahead and call this camera. So I'm gonna hit okay. And now we have camera. This filter will change the way something looks on my scene. Now. I do want to go ahead and move these items here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on both my on-screen element, that's gonna be the little browser source, and then also the camera. I'm gonna shift click and add both of these. So I'm gonna right click and we're gonna group this and we're going to call that group, we're gonna call this camera source. And I'm gonna go ahead and minimize it. And that locks in both of these two together. So now if I want to, I can go ahead and click on this folder right here and it'll move both of these together simultaneously. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that as is. We're going to come back over here to our filters. With this selected, I'm going to go ahead and click on camera source, and that's going to select the folder. Now, this could be another source. I could just individually, if I didn't have this thing here, you would actually see all three of the sources. But I'm going to click on camera source. That's going to be the folder. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and shrink this back down over here to the left. I don't really need to see it. So I'm going to go ahead and move it down here. And what I want to do is I want to put this somewhere. I want I want a transition to happen, but I want it to happen on screen with a touch of a button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this. I'm going to bring it down here. I'm going to blow this up. Maybe something about this size. So I'm liking it right in the middle. And that's going to bring in my camera all nice and big. So check and see me and everybody can see what I'm doing. But I go full screen with this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come down here and click this get transform button. And that's going to basically set a point at which this image is now at. This is going to be the new point. This is basically point number two that I want my camera to move to. So now that it's sitting there, there is a bunch of other options here and I could get into these, but you know, if you guys want to play around, you can figure out what they do. We have the duration of how long it takes to move from point A to point B. Now I want this to be pretty quick. So I'm going to actually make this one second long and to get one second is a thousand milliseconds so looking pretty good uh now easing over here you can either have it ease in ease out or ease in and out and that's just going to make the movement nice and sm uh, smooth you know what i'm saying so it starts off kind of smooth and then kind of comes to a stop and you'll see that here in a second now the easing function there's a bunch of different choices here and each one of these choices moves just a little bit differently than other ones so play around try these out they all do something a little bit different 
and I can actually, I'll put a uh, link down below and it, it literally, this literally goes over every single feature that you guys can see uh, happen in your OBS. And, and when I'm saying feature, I mean, you can see how the image moves on screen. So if you pretend this little green dot here is the, the image itself, let me go ahead and blow this up. You can see exactly what's happening now with this kind of ease out sign. So if I change this to sign and ease out, you can see how it moves. It starts off fast and then it goes into slow. So if you watch the little ball, starts out fast and then it goes into slow so play around with all these things i'll put this down in, uh, in the description below just so you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like as you uh use each one of these i'm gonna hit quadratic let's see if we can find quadratic in here quad right here so you can see it's a nice ease movement if i look at the ease and out you can see it starts out slow goes a little faster and slows back down you see that so i'm gonna leave it as quad now this curve will curve the way the image moves either you set it to a negative value and it'll curve towards the center of the screen or you do it towards the plus side and it'll curve like outside away from the center of the scene and i'll demonstrate that here in a second let's go ahead and leave it at zero for now so right now we have this set to using a hotkey and we're going to leave it that way because i like using hotkeys but there is a bunch of other so uh, options here like if you hide a source maybe you can activate this if you show a source it could activate the the move uh, and there's a bunch of other options here so you know play around if you guys need something like this i'm just going to leave it as hotkey because i just want to be able to push a button on my keyboard or on my stream deck and have something move next we're going to go scroll down here to a next move and what i want this to do is when i hit a hotkey i want it to transition from point a to point b but then i also want it to go from point b back to point a so i'm going to go ahead and hit reverse and then lastly down here i'm going to go ahead and select next move on and we'll we'll take a look at this i'm going to leave it as hockey and uh that's looking pretty good okay so now that we have our camera here and we've already uh we've set our transform you know, again uh i hit get transform now what i want to do is instead of uh trying to figure out how to start this back at square one which is point a i can literally just move this wherever i want i can just make make sure i want this to be here so this could be my starting position. And now when I click the start button, it's going to hiccup there. But now you can see that I set this to hotkey and reverse. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow it to go back and forth utilizing a hotkey. Now we're going to set a hotkey real quick inside of the settings. I'm going to go ahead and hit settings and we'll come down to hotkey. And if I come down here to main scene, because that's the scene that we're in. And also this is called the camera filter. I'm going to go ahead and find camera. I found it right here. And right here, I can type in control B as maybe my hotkey, or maybe I could do it as uh, the number three, or maybe I can do it as backspace or numpad five, or for me, I'm just going to hit control alt B. That's going to be how I'm going to transition. And then maybe I can assign that as a hotkey somewhere else if I wanted to, or just leave it as is. So I'm going to leave it as control alt B, hit apply. And I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. I'm liking what all this is doing. Close. And now when I hit control alt B, you can see it's going to transition between these two. Now, if you have this link to a stream deck and you have the stream deck, hit control alt B for you. It's going to do this exact same thing. So control alt B and it'll send it right back to where it was. Now, if I don't like this original starting point, I can go ahead and move this. Maybe I'm liking it right there. So control alt B and it goes right back between the two, the, the two points. And maybe I want it actually down here for today. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. And I hit control alt B again. You can see it goes back into full screen just like that. And you got the simple movement, man. Nothing to it very very easy so now we're going to try something a little bit different here and we'll go back over to this scene and we're going to take these and we're maybe we're going to try to flip them you want to go ahead and click on the scene right click filters add a scene to, or add a uh, a move source i'm going to go ahead and make this one called uh, move camera and then i'm going to add another one we're going to call this move gameplay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and come over here we're going to go to the camera which is going to move the camera i'm going to set it to camera and i'm going to come over here to gameplay and we're going to set that to gameplay and now it's looking at the correct target so the moving camera what i want it to do is i want it to end up where it is right here right now and i also want this one to end up right here where it is so i'm gonna also hit get transform and it's gonna lock in the coordinates of where these are now what i want to do is i want to move these where i actually want to have them end up so i'm gonna move both of them over and just like that that's looking pretty good so what i can do is i can scroll down here we're gonna have a move at 300 milliseconds i'm not going to change any of these settings we're going to move on a hotkey. I'm going to hit down here. I'm going to go ahead and click on reverse. And over here, I'm going to scroll down and we're going to hit reverse. And again, we're going to select hotkey, scroll down, hit hotkey. And when I hit start, you can see that one moves over and it goes back, goes back and forth, back and forth. And uh, same with this one over here, back and forth, back and forth. Now, what I want to do is I want to go into my settings and we're going to go find this again. So we are in a new scene. So I'm going to go to hockey's. I'm going to scroll down to our standby scene, which is where we are now. And we have the move camera and the move gameplay. I'm going to make both of these the exact same key bind by hitting control alt V and then hit this one as also control alt V. And what that's going to do when I hit control alt V, it's going to take both sources 
and move them. And it's going to swap. So I'm going to hit apply. Hit OK. And now when I hit Control Alt V, you're going to see those two things swap. And if I hit it again, they're going to move back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And I could fine tune this and make them perfectly lined up wherever they are. But, you know, for like, I just wanted to keep this something simple and you guys can kind of see the benefits of what this can do. So if you ever wanted to flip things around or move things on your screen, this is the way to do it. And so just as a little demonstration purpose here, I'm going to go ahead and take the camera and we're going to apply a little bit of a curve to it. We're going to make this a negative curve. We're going to do maybe negative 120. I'll come over to my gameplay and I'll make that positive maybe 120. Let's take a look at what it does. Control Alt V. And you can see it turns it. So it's doing a little something wacky, which could be kind of cool. So again, it's rotating around the center point of where they're moving from. So if this is moving to here, then it's going to take that, that line and it's going to draw a line either positive or negative and then rotate around that line. So that's kind of what's happening here. The next step I want to show you guys is that this also applies to transitioning between different scenes. Now, what's cool about this is if I have a source and I have it somewhere else in another scene, such as the full camera scene. Now we have our pink camera and we also have the pink camera in here. What I can have it do is I can have it transition between here and here, but through motion rather than a fade using the transition move. So what I want to do is come down here on the bottom right, add. I'm going to go ahead and add move. And we're going to leave it called move. That's going to be the transition move. Let's actually call it move transition. And now we have it as move transition. It, our transition is ready to go. Now, let me slide this on over here. Now, if you are confused by anything inside of this menu, don't be too confused. It looks complicated, but I assure you it's not. And the website actually goes through each one of the little pieces of settings and tells you exactly what they do. Uh, so it's not too complicated. So back in here, now that we've added the source, now when I switch between these two scenes, watch what happens to the pink camera when I go back to standby. You can see it kind of morphs into where the other full screen cam is. Now, let me slow this down. Let me add a nice three second delay here. So now it's going to take three seconds, 3000 milliseconds to transition between standby and full cam. So if we go back to standby, you can see exactly what's happening. It's moving it to that position. Now, because I have my camera underneath this source right here, that's why this blue ended up being on top. So if I move my camera to the very top, now when I transition, it will be on top of the blue. And you can see exactly what's happening. I transitioned back. So I'm going to go ahead and add a different type of thing. We're going to add bounce. And we're going to take a look at how that looks. So now you can see what bounce is kind of doing. It kind of comes in a little bit more playfully, I guess. And then it bounces back into where it was. Or you can go back to what it was, which was something like quadratic. And if I uh, go ahead and transition between the scenes again, you can see how it moves and it finally settles in. So pretty cool feature. And uh, to everybody else, it looks like one giant scene. But for you, you know that your scenes are transitioning between one another. Just like that, we have learned how to transition between two different scenes. And again, this is all kind of in the, uh, the website's description on how this all works. So if you guys are getting confused and wondering how the different types of transitions happen, uh, you just read down here in the bottom and it'll teach you everything you need to know. So uh, just going back here, I just want to show you guys again, this is what you're kind of working with. And again, if I go back to the standby scene, we can go ahead and see again, if I hit control alt V, we'll swap the two sources that still works. I'm going to go back to our main scene. And if I hit control B, you can still, you can see it's still working. It's still doing its job. You know what I'm saying? So Pretty freaking cool, man. So now you can kind of see how I move my cam from point A to point B. Now, again, I'm doing this all with a stream deck. So I've already set up hotkeys that if I hit a certain button on my stream deck, I move it to my top right or uh, top left or bottom kind of middle left or bottom right. Or maybe I bring out my other camera source and kind of see here what's uh what's going on. I got my room in the background, another moving cam. It's a good time. So that's it for uh, how to move your scenes. It's not too crazy. Sources and scenes can both move together or they can go individually. But hopefully this helps you guys out and kind of gets the juices flowing on terms of like how to upgrade your stream just a little bit in terms of moving sources between scenes and also within the same scene just to add that much more quality to your own streams productions and uh, whatever you might be utilizing it for. So go check it out. The plugin again is called Move. I'll link it all down below, dude. Don't worry. It's all down there. And uh, I wish you luck on your adventure of your streams and casts. And I'll talk to you on the next one, okay? Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Don't feel like you got to, but it would help me out. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.